Hi, today's guest, believe it or not, gets paid for hurting people. Are you talking about a pro wrestler? <laughs> Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. I'm here today with a special guest, and this gentleman here, I'll tell you what, did you ever think about someone getting paid to hurt somebody? <laughs> well, <laughs> Lee Bovard works here for Pistons up in the department where they work on their Healthy part, right? Yeah, well, and should be. <laughs> I'm 85 years old, and he said, does that hurt? I said, well, no, it don't hurt. Just quit it. <laughs> and then he gets worse. <laughs> well, anyways, what impressed me about him, really, was his love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lee, you really impressed me since the day I met you. You, were not, you had enough wisdom to talk about the Lord on the job and enough wisdom to when not to talk. And I think that's impressing to me. Okay. So I want to thank you for definitely for coming over here today. And, and you know, the whole staff up there at Pistons, I want to say hello. They are excellent up there, you know. They but are. I always joke, I said, you get paid to hurt people. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and then you can see the improvement, right? Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. why it's worth it. That's why we keep doing it. Yeah. Now, what's your title of your job up there? I'm a physical therapist assistant. Okay. And how long have you been there? Uh, almost 17 years now, going on. 17 years. Almost, yeah, pretty close to 17 years. All right, now, you know, our ministry here is known for just ordinary people, which I met you and, you know, we talked and mm -hmm. so forth, you know. And you know I'm born again and you're born again. Yes. But all your life that wasn't the truth, right? No. Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I was born and raised in Grove City, Pennsylvania. Um, small family, two sisters, my father and mother and I. Uh, we were members of a uh, Presbyterian church in Grove City, but never went. I never remember going as a whole family or anything. I do remember going to church a handful of times with my sisters. My grandfather was a deacon there, so I did go occasionally with him. But on a regular basis, I didn't go to church, no, not at all. I grew up very naive of the Bible. Um, just very naive. I, w I wouldn't say that I didn't believe in God. I just really never thought about it. I just kind of floated through life. So, just. But you didn't, you didn't uh, go to any sports activities or you grew up? I mean, you, you weren't into the drunkenness stuff or stuff like oh, that? I, no. Tell me about that. How did, how did that happen in high school? A lot of people, you know, they get involved in that, right? Into? Your drinking and all that. No, I had a, sh a very, um, I guess, brief period um, when I was like a senior in high school, hanging out with the guys and drinking beer. but. We would always have to drive over to Ohio and get the three two beer, yeah. uh, which was basically just water. But uh, I didn't even like that. I did it just to kind of try to fit in, um, so forth. But it didn't take long before I realized I didn't like that. <laughs> so it wasn't a very long period of time before I got out of drinking or anything. No, I never, never got involved in too heavy into that. I know. Well, did you go to college? How did you become? No, I actually didn't go to college. I graduated from high school made the decision that um, I was just gonna work for a living and just make money. That's all my focus was on. So I wound up uh, working in steel mills, machine shops, um, all over the place, whatever I could do to keep a job and just just make money. What, happened, what, what, what did Christianity mean? To, did it mean anything to you at all? I mean, no. you, you weren't going to church at all or nothing like that? No, I was not going anywhere at all. In fact, I always tell the kind of funny story. I used to like sports a lot. Well, I still do, but I, I watched football games, and I can always remember, I believe it was in the 80s, at all the big football games, they would have the uh, gentleman in the stands, and you could see him. He would always sit where the camera was on him, and he had, like, the Afro haircut, it was like the multicolor, like a rainbow type of thing. And he would always hold a sign up, John 316. And I always saw that for years. I saw that, but I had no idea what that was. And I never even made an effort to look it up. 
And you, and you weren't going to church or anything? I wasn't going to church, no. Well, what started you into your walk? Well, actually, I, I had a defining period in my life that ultimately led to a defining moment. But between 1991 and 92, I was married at that time. And in about a year's period of time, my wife asked me to leave because I had struggled with depression all my life. And I really didn't make the efforts I should do to get the help. And with the depression came um, a bit of a temper. In fact, I'll say a little more than a bit of a temper. So she asked me to leave. Uh, shortly after that, I couldn't see my sons for six months. I was not, by law, I was not allowed to see them for six months. She was concerned about my temper and so forth. Shortly after that, I was in a near fatal car wreck. Um, and then after that, uh, after I rehabbed from that, I had no job to go back to. My job was not held. Then shortly after that, I went bankrupt. And then shortly after that, I was hospitalized for depression and for thoughts of suicide. So that was kind of the, I guess I would say, the rock bottom for me. This time of depression, did you say you, you, you didn't want to talk to people? What was no, it? no, I did everything I could to avoid people. I went shopping at the store late at night, early in the morning, didn't want to be around anybody. I, everything I could do to avoid people. But well, if you're doing that, what happened? There had to be something that started to attract you to the Lord. Did somebody start witnessing to you or did, you know? I had a friend of mine um, who was always went to church and he would always talk to me about the Lord. But, and it had to have been very frustrating for him because I wasn't really interested. And you know, and I'm sure it showed that I wasn't really interested. Um, so he would talk to me, but after I had this period that was very ugly, in my life, um, the, the Lord started working on me. I knew, I knew that I needed something. I knew that. I didn't know what it was, but I knew there was something missing in something my life. Missing. My life was very incomplete. So the Lord put my beautiful wife, Linda, in my life now. And Linda has uh, always been a Christian. And he put her, and we got, uh, got to be very close. Uh, we got involved me mentally, emotionally, and physically. I asked her to marry me and she accepted that, but uh, we were getting involved sexually premaritally. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she had always been a Christian, but had obviously fallen away a little bit. So um, one night in my apartment, I was in Sharon, Pennsylvania, and I had an apartment and she lived uh, in Youngstown, Poland, Ohio. And I was sleeping and it was a Saturday night, Sunday morning, and I was in a dead sleep and the Lord woke me up out of my sleep. I will never forget this. And he just very simply said to me, stop sinning. And when I look back on that now, what's amazing about it was that I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. And I was sinning in more than one way, but I had no trouble with the discernment knowing what sin he was talking about. And it was the premarital sexual relations. Mm. So in the morning when it got to be a decent time, instead of going to church, I called my, my now wife, my fiance, and I told her, asked her if I could come down and talk to her. She said, yes, of course. I came down, I told her what happened, and she expressed to me that she had been also feeling some conviction oh, in her heart about this. Yeah. So that was the moment that we got down on our knees in front of her couch, and I accepted Jesus Christ at that time, and she recommitted her life to Jesus. Wow. But actually, you, didn't, you probably didn't think you were even a sinner before that, right? It didn't. It, didn't just never, it never occurred to me. I mean, it was it, just, I just floated through life and I thought, again, I thought I'm a decent guy. I'm not, quote, hurting anybody. Um, and I just really never even gave it a thought. I really had no plan in life, just kind of floating through, going day by day. Don't, don't you think that there's a lot of people out there like you that really yeah. think they're going to go to heaven, people working maybe at your position or your job and so forth, right? Heavens. I think there's a lot of people out there that believe that, absolutely. Because uh, I don't think that they believe that God would send any good person, or I shouldn't say send, allow any good person to go to hell. Do you think you believe that? I probably did at that time. You did? I would imagine I would have thought there's no way I would go to hell because what did I do or not do to deserve it? Yeah. You know, scripture teaches us, like, you were more, more like Nicodemus, right? 
you know, you, you were a man really like Nicodemus. You were religious, but you weren't even really religious because you weren't even going to church, Correct. right? You Correct. had no, you had no desire to go to church, right? Absolutely. You know, some sometimes we as now that you're on your job and you got saved, you, did you find a good church to join? And well, it initially it started out before I got married. I, I knew Linda, my my wife. Now I knew her. Um, and I was living over in Hermitage, in Sharon, Pennsylvania. Well, I started going to a First Assembly of God church in, in Hermitage. And I sat in the, in the pews one Sunday, and that's when I heard Reverend Martin read John 3.3, 3, that Jesus says, no one will enter the kingdom of heaven unless they're born again. And my thought went through my mind, hmm, well, considering <laughs> I don't know what it means to be born again, I would guess that I'm not. And that was the first time that really got my attention that uh, I, need to, I need to do something about this. So that was, and then after Linda and I were married, uh, we found where we go now, which is Church of the Rock in Poland, Ohio. Okay. And that has been an absolute blessing in our lives. And how about, how about you know, up there at your job and so forth, right? You have meet an awful lot of people like myself and so forth, right? Yes. You, you seem to be very, they let you, you can talk freely, but you have to use a little wisdom, am I right? Uh, Absolutely. As far as that, right? Yes. And Dr. Piston's office is, is real Christian office it's, up it's, there. Yes, it's Christian oriented, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm blessed because I have the freedom to talk about Jesus Christ. And more importantly, I have the freedom to show what Jesus Christ has done in my life. Yeah. And you know, I always joke about my wife knows that I said you pay to hurt me, but uh, <laughs> I said I'd get you on TV and get even, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty much doing that. I, think. <laughs> I, I have to laugh, you know. I I go up there and I'm in one here and somebody's growing it over here and somebody's growing it over there, you know. And I, this is before I got my first drone, you know. Yeah. Well, we have selective hearing. We hear what we want to hear. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's interesting is that. People like you have been raised in a decent family. Your mother and dad were probably good people. They were good they, people, yes. They treated you the best, right? Yeah, they best never they told, could, yes. They never told you about being born again because evidently maybe they weren't, right? I, I don't believe they knew any idea about it. They had no I, idea, right? I don't think so. So they, But they weren't going to church at all or just no, occasionally? No, no. My mother, I guess my mother was turned off uh, back either when I was very, very little or before I was born. She was... I guess something happened at a church that upset her and she made ultimately the worst mistake she could and decided not to go to church ever again and she never did. So she got hurt? Yes. Yeah. Somehow yeah. I do not know the details but yes. Yeah. Now, question. Yes. You read the Bible now? Yes I do. The desire, right? The desire, yes. Never had a desire to read the Bible? No. No, not at all. No. There's people out there, you know, they say born again. They don't really know what it means to be born again, okay. right? Yes. And I want to talk a little bit out there because Joyce and I have received so many calls. And it's not, it, I don't care whether you're a Baptist or Presbyterian or a Catholic out there. There was a lady that called and she, and she was a little bit upset because we had a man by the name of Jean, Jean Gardner on. He was a former uh, Mormon. And then he, well, he was a Catholic, and then he turned to uh, Mormonism, mm -hmm. and then he got born again, and he said he never heard about John 3.3 3 or born again mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church. And I said, well, and I explained this, you know, you could possibly hear about John 3.3, 3 and you weren't ready. Yes. It wasn't the time. And I use this illustration. I had a try with the Pittsburgh Pirates when I was in high school, okay, and luckily they picked two people out of this area, and I was one of them, okay? Mm -hmm. And I always put this way, the old Forbes Field, some of the old timers don't know what I'm talking about, but if a guy hits a home run and I'm here hitting my ball like this, you know, and the crowd's screaming, and the, and the pastor is preaching born again. Do you follow me? Yes. And it went right over my head. Absolutely, absolutely. And so in conjunction to encourage you pastors out there, right? Yes. There is a time that some plant and some water 
and God gives the increase. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and I've been, I've been in many churches. One is Pastor Chuck Eccles and his wife. I preached in their church many a times too, and they knew my changed life too. And I told Chuck, I said, you don't know today who you might be touching. Absolutely. In the same way with your testimony out there, yes. right? Yes, yes. But you came to a time in your life, he said, I always put it this way, you got sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it you, does. You, you knew there had to be a better way of living, right? Well, I knew, I knew there was something missing. Something you missing. Know, there That's was it. always, even when things were going well in my life, the surrounding circumstances, I just never felt completely full. You know, I was, I would fill my life with new cars, with vacations, with women, whatever, yeah. you know, that would give you sometimes temporary happiness, but I emphasize it was very temporary. So a, you, new, a new car is cool for about a week, maybe a month at the most. Then it becomes just another car. Yeah. And I, yeah, so. So you had that void, we call it a void. A right? void. A void in your life, right? And, Absolutely. Until everybody's born again. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with going to church. We know that. And there's nothing wrong with being water baptized. You know, I was water baptized as a baby. Yes. And now, have you been water baptized? I was, I was water baptized as a baby, and then my wife Linda and I, uh, were baptized um, at Church of the Rock about um, I mean, about seven months after we were married. After you were yes, married? Yes, absolutely. And, and were you baptized before you got saved or after you got saved? Uh, after I got saved. Right. Oh, definitely, because that's what we, we well, knew this is what, had, this is what God wanted to be done because before being born again really doesn't accomplish anything. You know, you know and I'm, I'm speaking honestly out to people, the church is full of uh, religious people. Yes. And I use that terminology in a sense, you know, that I wasn't even religious, you know, and I never had a relationship, but I have a relationship now with the Absolutely. Lord Jesus Christ, you know. And my wife was the same way when uh, my second wife, uh, Joyce, which uh, my first wife passed away, you know. Yes, that. absolutely. But we at Crossing Paths here are trying to get a simple message out here today that the church is full of people who are going to church, good people. I get back to where this lady called me one day and she heard this testimony about this former Mormon, okay, and that was a Catholic and then joined the Mormon church and then got born again and he said he never heard John 3, 3 in, uh, in the Catholic church. And just like I said, he, he might have heard it in defense of the church. Mm -hmm. And like I might have heard it too in my, when I went to church uh, once a year or three times a year yes. and so forth, you yeah. know. But many a times the Lord is working on us, you and me, and I stand here today, and he stands here to live as an example, right? Yes. Now, Proverbs 11.30 says, the, it's a scripture I wanted to give you today. The Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he who wins souls, what, is wise. Right. So on your job, you're planting, right? Planting some seeds. I'm yes. planting over here today, yeah. and maybe someone will come along and water. Yes. But God gives the increase. Yes, He does. Not me, yes. not you. Absolutely. And that's what this Crossing Pass television ministry is all about. You know, we're on now 35 states, and I was, it's amazing what God's done in my life. And I'm sure people know me from BC. I call it before Christ. You didn't know me, but <laughs> I know that, that God changed my life 41, 42 years ago. We're on maybe approximately 100 to 200 cable companies. And I was telling somebody the other day, you know, and, and, and Lee, I know you can uh, refer to this. You know, I'm 85 years old. I could go to Florida for six months a year. I've got the money, I've got the time, and so forth. But you know what? I'd be right here. I'd rather be here across the desk winning souls of the Lord yes. in my accounting practice. Yes. I have a guy come in to me one time when I first got saved. He said, Don, boy, you got a fantastic testimony. He said, uh, you ought to start a church. And I said, well, one thing I don't go from other people, I'll see what God says. And I went yes. to the Lord and God said, you got a church right across from the desk. Absolutely. And today I got three to 4,000 income tax clients, 200 corporations, 22 employees out of debt because I got born again yes. on November 22nd, 1974. <laughs> And Hebrew says I'm a peculiar person. This is the first time you've been on TV, right? Oh, absolutely. I would have never believed that. No. <laughs> yeah, and we're talking like you knew what you were doing. <laughs> I guess so. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a good part of it. See, crossing paths, we don't need professionals. We need just down-to-earth people. Jesus walked on this earth yes. with ordinary people. Yes. And I'd say one thing here today, people. If there's anything in my life that 
a lot of people will say, well, Don, you can take a drink. Yes, I, I can take a drink, but I don't want a drink. I want to be an example of what Christ can do in a life, man's life. And that's what happened 41, 42 years ago. When I picked up this Bible, now don't forget people, I'll tell you how qualified I am to sit on a stage here. I flunked Bible twice at Westminster College. <laughs> now I had to go to college to, because they gave me a, I was an all-state basketball player and some of them don't know out there, but I was an all-state basketball player and it was quite an accomplishment. I played in the NIT tournament with, uh, uh, with uh, Westminster College, we lost in a quarterfinal, so I got clear up there and so forth, you know. But I don't know whether Dr. Hopkins, when he's preaching out there, maybe a little bit uh, sunk in. Because I'm here today to tell you that Jesus is real. Yeah. And you say to me, well, Don, uh, I've done so many things wrong that God won't forgive me. No. no. Do, you, do you believe he's forgiven you? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. How, how do you know he's forgiven you? because I feel that I have a peace and contentment in me, and that's why he went to the cross. Okay. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of my sins. And you said the words, you have peace and contentment, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And you know that, you know, and a lot of people think, well, I'm a good person, right? Didn't you think you were a good person? Oh, uh, yes, I did. I did. I, I mean, I, I thought I was good, but again, good is, in the Bible, you're comparing that to Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. You know, yeah, when Nicodemus, as you know, came to Jesus, you know, and Jesus said to Nicodemus, you're going to be born again, right? He and says what, it twice. Yes, twice. He says and, it and in he verse said, 7 He said, what well. do you mean? What do you mean? I, I'm, I'm six foot tall. I, I, am I going to climb back in my Into mother's womb? womb? And Nicodemus, I'm, Jesus, I'm sure, went like this. Oh, <laughs> well, unless you're born of the water. And the Spirit, of course, we don't believe water baptism. We believe water is the Word of God. Yes. Okay? Unless you're born of the water and Spirit. And, and then he goes back in 7 there, John 3, 7. Marvel not when I say unto you, must be born again. Yes. And where the wind cometh, where the wind goeth, such is the one with the Spirit of God. And you know, people, you don't get saved on feelings. You get saved on faith. Yes. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted that unto him for Righteousness. You know, John speaks about not only being born again, but all during the book of John, if you have never been born again, start out with the book of John. I do recommend that. You know why? Because I think it gets right down into the fact that when you're born again, you'll see the difference in your life. You'll, you'll want to be picking up the Bible. Now, you say, well, you know, I've tried this, I've tried that. The Bible says there is nobody that God will turn down if you'll turn to Him. Yes. And that's what happened to Lee here. That's what happened to Lee and a lot of people up in Dr. Piston's office and a lot of people here in the audience today and a lot of pastors out there, they're not, they're not seeing their seed. And I'm a perfect example of a, of a Methodist church out there years ago. I preached in Methodist church, Baptist church, all, all kind of churches. And I want to tell you something. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 1, 16, 6, and 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John 1, 12 says, To all those who receive him, gave he power to become sons of God, even to those who believe yes. on his name. Yes. And that's what someone come along, told him a little bit, a little bit here, yes. a little bit there. I'm going to ask you today, where do you stand? You know, this ministry now has grown so fast. This little ministry in Hermitage, Pennsylvania, all we ask is if you're enjoying this ministry, maybe you might consider out $7 a month, or we call it $77 for a whole year, one flat check, and that will keep us on the air out there more and more. It's not the people that have sent us the big checks, they help. It's everyday people like you and me out there that are supporting this ministry. Our television ministry is in Hermitage, Pennsylvania. And if you'd like to be on this television ministry, all you got to do is write me a letter and let me know when you got born again and saved and we'll get back to you. Today is the day of salvation, yes. not tomorrow. Yes. Not tomorrow. Our ministry has run tours to Israel. I've been to Israel 14 times. You think well, 41 years ago when I was a drunk, I'd be sitting on television here <laughs> and talking about Jesus? Come on. I'd have said, boy, you lost your marbles. <laughs> well, I want to tell you something. I'm telling you, Jesus is real. Absolutely. We run, we have tours. We've been to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. My wife and I speak all over the country. I'm going down to Florida next month for a little bit, but we speak down there too. But the main thing is, do you know Jesus? 
You say, well, I go to church. That's good. I've been water baptized. That's good. And you know, I talk about water baptism. Yes, I believe in water baptism. Water baptism won't save you. But I'm going to ask you one thing. If you die right now, do you know if you go to heaven? And 90% of the people I would say they don't know for sure. And there's no actually set sinner's prayer except the heart. The Bible says the heart is a deceitful thing. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised, you from the, raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life here today, people? Don't delay. Maybe you're a family out there sitting around watching this television program. Our television program now is nationwide every Wednesday at 5.30 on Cornerstone Television. Also, the latest edition, get this, 12 o'clock noon on Sunday, right before the pro football games start. <laughs> How about that? There you go. How about that, people? That's for the late sleepers. 12 o'clock noon nationally, crossing past television ministry. Do you think that I've been set years ago, I'd sit here and talk about Jesus? No. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, somebody start praying behind my back years ago. My wife got saved first. My first wife, Donna Reed, she got saved first. And I come home one night and she said to me, well, now get this, I was an athlete. I know all kinds of athletes. This is how dumb I was. She said, well, if I get raptured out here tonight, you'll know what, you won't know what happened. And I thought she said ruptured. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, all I knew, I didn't know nothing, nothing. Yes, I went to Westminster College, but I didn't know Jesus. Yes. But I can tell you today, people, I'm standing on this television tower 41 years ago, 41 some years ago, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Receive him here today. Ask him to come in your heart. Say, I'm a sinner. Lord, right now by faith, I receive you into my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross for me personally, rose from the grave, ascended to heaven, and say, Lord Jesus, right now, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you can say that prayer. Don't worry about feelings. Call this ministry here. We'll send you a Bible. If you want to start a church, we'll send you all kinds of Bibles. But most of all, today is the day of salvation. The telephone people are standing right now, 724-981-7777. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for watching Crossing Past TV. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar. I'm a former NFL football player with the New England Patriots and also with the Detroit Lions. But I struggled with going blind and being overweight. So if you struggle with weight loss, issues with your eye, arthritis, pains in your neck, lower back, or your knees, I know that Freezor has helped me and it could also help you. Please go to our website or dial that 1-800 number and get your order placed today.